I never believed it. Honestly, I, I came from True Green where we just, you know, starter fert fixes everything, all salty ferts all the time, just, you know, throw more nitrogen at it, whatever. And man, since coming involved with, with these guys, with uh, John Perry and learning from him and going to Longcology for a couple of years now and then learning from Matt Martin and hanging out with him, there's so many better ways to do it. And, and like I told you guys before, I go to the sod farms, the sod farms, they, they laugh. Humic acid, we've been using that for years. That ain't no secret, bro. <laughs> so... Yeah, funny stuff. All right, last one. Let's go to Bill in Rochester, New York. Hello, Alan. This is Bill calling from Rochester, New York. Uh, my yard is a 5,000 square foot front lawn that I'm working on right now, and it was mostly Kentucky bluegrass. I purchased an expensive uh, drought-resistant Kentucky bluegrass and a blue and rye combination equally as expensive. Uh, two years ago, it was a basically a clay base, which you advised me I could grow grass on, which it does, and it comes in very nice in the fall and very nice in the spring, but the sunlight so it hits it from early morning until probably 1, 2. We don't get any shade till about 3 in the afternoon, so it doesn't hold up well. I'd like to overseed this year, thatch and overseed with a tall turf type, get another mixture in there. I mow it 4 to 4.5 inches, and it's very thick, but I have a problem with with POA. There was a lot of POA in that seed. It's not concentrated in any one area. It's throughout. And that leaves a lot of brown stalks all year long after it dies off. So what I'd like to do is get rid of that. I know I can't go to prodiamine this fall. Um, what should I do if I overseed to try and fight the, pro the POA next spring? Um, I've sprayed it with tenacity. It does, it does, kills it. Um, but I've also, you know, seen quite, there's quite a bit of it, and I cannot kill it all. So what would you advise in the spring to fight the POA if I overseed and forget the, pre, the pre-emergent this fall? The other problem I have is it's called barnyard grass popping up in areas. How do I kill that? I've tried tenacity. I've tried uh, sedge hammer. I've tried sedge ender while I'm spraying for sedge. Nothing seems to dent it. Uh, if you could give me some advice on what to do, It'd be appreciated. Uh, thanks again for all your help. All right, Bill. So we got a few different things going on here. Now, is a kind of a continuing theme here that we've had, and that's I'm glad that Bill called him with this question about the POA and should I seed or should I not seed? What decisions? There's always these decisions to make, right? And <clears throat> this is like any relationship. You have to, you can't, there's never a perfect decision. There's always some some give and take in a relationship, right? Especially relationships with people. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions and sometimes you have to take a hurt. Sometimes they have to take a hurt. Sometimes you get the win. Sometimes they get the win. Sometimes you share in the win. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? So let's talk about it. So I'm going to give Bill two choices here. <clears throat> so the first, let's, before we do that though, let's talk about Poa Annua one more time. So what is Poa Annua? So it's annual bluegrass and it germinates in the fall as soil temperatures fall to 70. So that's a very recurring temperature that we talk about. Germinates in the fall and it grows. And then it lives over the winter. And in the spring, it rages and it grows really, really fast and all through summer. And then in the summer, it'll sprout little seeds. It'll drop those seeds and then it dies. Okay. And I showed it in my video when I went to Salt Lake. It doesn't blend in. Sometimes it'll live longer or shorter. Sometimes it'll stay alive in the summer longer or in the shade but it doesn't blend in. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look the same. And as he's saying, it's dying off and it's leaving spots. So what can you do? Well, the general way that you're going to stop Poa annua then is to put down pre-emergent herbicides for diamine and or dithiapyr or dithiapyr in the fall as soil temperatures fall to 70 and stop it. Just like we do crabgrass in the spring. You treat it the same way, except you do the, the, the pre-emergence in the fall. However, the other challenge that Bill has is he's got these expensive grasses that they're kind of checking out in the summer. Even though one of them, he said, is supposed to be drought tolerant and was very expensive, it's still checking out in the summer. And, and you know, the term drought tolerant, is, it's kind of a marketing thing, right? I mean, again, there's just nothing that's going to do well when you get over 95. But he's like, hey, I want to add some fescue in and maybe help with that. So choice number one is, is that you do go ahead and seed, and then you're going to use tenacity at the time of seeding. Tenacity will act as a pre-emergent and suppress poa annua for 30 days. Now, it's not going to stop at all, but it's something to help with, okay? That's your choice number one. You're still going to have to deal with POA next year. You're going to have to just use tenacity to kill it as a post-emergent, and it's just going to go through all that trouble again. I would actually recommend, though, 
Bill, that you go with choice number two here, okay? Because it seems like your lawn is already fairly thick. And when your lawn is already fairly thick, if you overseed with some turf type tall fescue, let's say that that replaces 15% of the lawn. Well, that's not enough to notice a difference in heat, right? So I would wonder why you would want to invest the extra money to try to make this grass, you know, to add something in that's more drought tolerant when really you could just work on the grass you have and make it more drought tolerant as it is. In other words, don't try to seed your way into drought tolerance or don't try to seed your way into heat tolerance, especially knowing that you have Poa annua that's also competing in there. I would rather see you do this. I would rather see you go on do defense right now because you can wipe out a Poa annua problem. This is assuming it's not Poa trivialis, which is perennial. You can wipe out a Poa annua problem in three to four years, just like you can crabgrass. If you go pre-emergent every single fall, heavy pre-emergence, every single fall time, pre-emergent, it really as soil temperature, sn just, just as you catch a whiff in the air that that soil temperature might be close to 70, get that pre-emergent down, heavy. Four pounds per thousand on the dithy up here. I'll last you plenty of long enough time. Okay, and then that, and then in the spring too, because sometimes some late bloomers will come up, but you're going to put pre-emergent down in the spring for crabgrass and it will take care of any late bloomer poa annua. If you do that for the next three to four years, what you'll do is all the seed, the majority of the seeds will germinate that are eligible for germination will. Because the thing about poa annua seeds is they'll stay in the soil for several years. It's not like the one drops this year and germinates the next year. And 100% of the ones that drop this year germinate the next year. It doesn't work that way. They, they hang out, they'll wait. Some get deeper, some get shorter. You know, some, some are lazy, some are fast bloomers, whatever. It's just, that's just how seeds work, right? So <clears throat> the, the fact that you need three or four years to make sure they've all germinated their way out, they've kind of all burned themselves out. I would go for that. That is what I would do. And in fact, if, if, if 35 or 45 days after your first application of dithiopyr, if it's still sniffing over 60 in the soil, I would put another application down just to be sure. Three or four years, eliminate that. Focus on that problem first. Now, back to the summers, that current grass you have, there's some things you can still do to hedge your bets on that. And I would work on really driving those deep roots. I would work on using sea kelp to drive those roots deep. Get as much carbon material into that soil. When you, go up, when you come up into the summer, when you know you're going to hit that hot period where every year it seems to start to check out, get some hydrotain down. Hydrotain can go a long way to helping your lawn during the heat stress times. Make sure your irrigation is in line. You know, again, there's not much you're going to do if it gets over 95, but you can really work on those deeper roots. I will say that I, when I was in uh, Salt Lake, that it was over in the 90s, and that Kentucky bluegrass there was all green. Now, it didn't have the humidity. The humidity is really what it is. It's the humidity just burns things down. It just burns things down to the ground. It's pretty crazy. But that's what I would do. I would work on that. I would focus on one thing at a time. Give yourself three or four years where maybe you're going to struggle in the summer. Use some hydrotain. Do what you can. But get rid of that Poa annua. Then, after that four-year mark when you feel like, all right, I've defeated the Poa annua, then you go off after and start working on maybe adding in some different cultivars or some different grass types like turf type tall fescue that are going to be able to help withstand the heat. The idea being, I started this little conversation out as relationships. We don't have to fix everything in the lawn in one season, not even two seasons. Sometimes things in a relationship can take a long time to fix. For those of you that have been married for a long time, you know that there are things about your spouse that that, that may have taken a decade to fix. <laughs> I don't want to start naming what those are, but you know. <laughs> so I'm just saying, look at it that way. You're going to be in this house for a long time, so work on that lawn over the years. Work on one problem at a time. Get that problem licked. It won't come back, and then you can work on the next things. Now, barnyard grass. Barnyard grass is a one that, it's an annual also, thank God. Annuals are easier to take care of. And it mirrors crabgrass. So the thing you want to do with barnyard grass is just make sure you definitely are getting your pre-emergence down, do your split applications in spring. And you should be able to stop the good majority of that. Now, if it's if it's if that's not happening, then I would question whether it's barnyard grass or not. It might be something else. However, if you do see it, the product that you want to use against barnyard grass is called Q4+. Plus. It's got 2,4-D at 11%, which is nice and high. It's got dicamba, quinclorac, and sulfentrazone. Q4 will do really well against barnyard grass. By the way, it's going to kill a whole lot of other stuff too. So it can be, and it's not that expensive. You can get it in smaller quantities. So Q4 plus, uh, it's kind of similar to speed zone, but it's got the carfentrazone instead of sulfentrazone. 
and uh, but uh, that uh, and Queen Clorac in there. So that's that's what's gonna really help you with that barnyard grass. It will also kill crabgrass and, like I said, a whole bunch of other things. So if you need post-emergent against barnyard grass, that's what you want to go with. Whoa, I probably just burned out your ears there, but. All right, that's going to end the podcast for this week. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. This has been Lawns Across America, episode 35. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, listening. I'll see you in the lawn.